You know, me going out to all these places is it, it, great. I, I love it, you know. Um, at the same time, you know, I'm blessed that I'm able to put, do what I love in front of family and friends, you know, and in front of the people that I used to support the club with, you know. It, 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 it's amazing. This is my first game jersey right here. My debut jersey. Um, so yeah, this is, the, this is the kitchen. My mom is in here a lot, but uh, I, my dad helps a lot too. I have to learn still, because when I'm out of the house, I'm dead right now. So. It's very special because I have one that's always out of the country, which is Anthony. He's in uh, Uruguay. And Jonathan's been traveling, so it's a blessing to have all my three and my complete family home for Christmas. Breaking news, Toronto FC has made a trade today, Adrian, and they're sending Elvero Ray to the Columbus crew for Dominic Oduro. I don't see it as anything bad. I see it, I see it as my stock still going up because that means coaches want you, that means teams want you. That's how you got to see it that way. You can't see it anything other than that. Otherwise, you lose focus. You got to be positive in this, in this job, otherwise, um, the lifespan is so short, you might lose it, and you don't want that. Um, for me too, it's personal. Um, I have to keep this job to take care of my family back home, so um, I can't lose my head. If I lose my head, my family is gonna go hungry, and I don't want that. I grew up in, a, in Accra. Anybody who knows Ghana knows who I'm talking about. Uh, my, my dad was in the military, so I used to live in the military camp, so it was very disciplined. You know, it, it was more about like, staying in camp, going to school, and at the end of the day, trying to see if you can join the military. And I didn't want that, I just wanted to play sports. And, and thank God my parents supported me on that. I'm the kid, basically, but also um, I'm fortunate to be the one who, who just travel abroad, sort of. I kind of count myself blessed to be in that situation, to be able to take care of my family, and I wouldn't want to do anything but, but keep doing that all my life. The last uh, few trades for this team seem to really have panned out so far. When you think about bringing in Luke Moore, when you think about bringing in Colin Warner, and now Dominic Aduro, uh, at least two of these guys are, are, are MLS uh, people, and, uh, and Luke Moore as well, just getting the goals, that uh, this has made this team better. You can pick up so many players, but at the same time, especially with the MLS, you want players that have that MLS experience. Anybody who has ever gotten traded know this feeling. Um, you know, it's a little bit unstable at first. Um, you, you just start thinking how you're gonna fit into it. But um, once, once you get into that city, once you get into that locker room, once you start training, you know, you become very comfortable. You adjust. This, this kind of locker room made it really easy for me. As soon as I got here, everybody was, you know, really into welcoming me, which made it really easy for me. And uh, I mean, JD's fantastic for a player of his caliber. He just, he's always want to mess with you. He, he's, he's a joker. You're a joker, by the way. So uh, uh, he's funny. Uh, Luke Moore also made it really good for me. Uh, Joe, um, and basically all the other guys. So um, it, it was easy for me to just assess everybody and, and, and become cool with them. So I didn't even have to choose who I kind of like want to hang out with. It was more like, shoot, everybody's good. 
I'm just trying to just take it one day at a time. Um, I'm trying to settle in. I think I just found a spot, um, which is close to, to Lakeshore, right? Uh, to Lake Ontario, which is really beautiful. So um, hopefully, hopefully that will that will help help me calm me down. I guess. Um, I mean, my teammates is making it again really easy for me to fit in, into the society that we have here. I think it's just time. Time tells me everything. Um, you know, once. Once you become comfortable, once once you start winning games, once your teammates around you, you know, help you to mature and help you to to get better, better every day. You know, you never know. It can be a full time thing or like a long term thing. Major League Soccer returns to BMO Field for the first time in nearly a month, and look who's home, American World Cup star Michael Bradley. Michael Bradley is back after his stint with the US men's national team. Michael Bradley's back from the World Cup, Jermaine Defoe is healthy, so things are looking up for Ryan Nelson's team. Incredible experience for sure. Um, obviously, been lucky, lucky enough to now play in two World Cups and to, to represent your, your country that stage is, is such such an honor it, you know, it gives you so much pride to to stand on the field before the game and hear the national anthem and to know at that in that moment that you're you're representing uh, you know, millions and millions of people back at home and he's got to be a coach's dream you want somebody to come back from the world cup he played on canada day four days ago he's back he only got back on thursday and said coach i'm ready i'm fit i'm willing i want to play I, I love to play. You know, I, I hate to, I hate to miss a game. I hate to, to have to watch from, from, from the sideline or watch from, from up above. And so, um, you know, doesn't mean that you're, you're not gonna ever miss a game because you know, there, there's little injuries, there's suspensions. Um, but still, I, I try to. Um, always do everything I, I can and, and to do everything in my power to make sure that I'm, I'm, I'm ready to play. And uh, that's a refreshing attitude. He's not one of those players who says, give me a week or 10 days on the beach to relax and get my head together. This is my day job and I want to play. So welcome back, Michael Bradley. Two of the most improved teams in Major League Soccer going head to head in a battle for points, which ultimately leads to the playoffs. It is less than nine months since these two clubs finished last and next to last in the Eastern Conference in 2013. First things first, it, it, anytime you, you come back after being gone, you know, you, it, it takes a little bit of time to change gears. Jackson bursts forward, finds Defoe, Defoe's in. Couldn't get it under control with his left foot, Defoe for Bradley. It's Bradley, first touch took it away. You know, obviously. You, you mentally you, you you try to do it as quickly as possible, but it's it's normal that then it takes a you know a training session or you know a few minutes in a game to now um, you know catch your bearings to to kind of readapt. Real chess match happening here with both teams trying to play the ball out from the back, both playing with a high line, both trying to dominate three men in midfield. Here is Defoe. Can he turn? He's gone down. Gets up. Bradley. Wouldn't come down quick enough for Michael Bradley. And blows the whistle for half time. There is no score. I thought that you know, it, it, it certainly wasn't our, our best 45 minutes of the year, but still, um, you know, playing against a good team, we there were a lot of a, a lot of positive things. Hey boys, this is not, it's not. We'll just make a change. Put Lukey, Lukey, you go up top. Yeah. Go up top, Jermaine. And uh, Dom's going to come on the right. Yeah. Okay. You saw the chances that will happen. You saw the chances that they are. When we do it right, uh, we'll expose them. What I'd say is if you go and commit yourself to pass, do it. Get in there. Work harder for each other. Get in between the lines. Because every time you pass the ball for three or four, and just be a bit patient. We've broken them down, haven't we? We've broken them down, we've got good opportunities. Okay? So Michael, 
Colin, you two are going to be there. Make sure, start it. Make sure, balance each other off. Okay? If Michael goes forward and that, you have to balance, balance Colin, and vice versa. Simple as that. Okay? Lukey, just get underneath in those little pockets there. Okay? Justin, brilliant. Bloomy, brilliant. Yeah, frustrating. Um, you know, felt like this was a game that we we needed to win, that we should have won. Um, but that's how it goes sometimes. England's got to make something of this because strong DC United might be in here. It's in. The opening goal, defensive breakdown. You know, I was excited to be back. Um, yeah, like I said, disappointed that now uh, the, the the game went the way it did because this was, you know, big game against a team close to us in the table and, and you know it would have been nice to to capitalize and a uh, innovation worthy of a man who served club and country exceedingly well over the last few weeks michael bradley takes his leave left footed in swinger it's not bad it's very nice it's perry kitchen it's dc united back in front by two goals to one it's not necessarily comparing us to them because we feel like we stack up pretty well against anybody um, and so it, it's you know more about looking looking at ourselves and, and you know understanding the things that were good the understanding the things that can be better and, and going from there the referee is going to allow the corner to be taken grandstand finish from toronto fc hamid let it go it's gone behind it's all over Drama to the last. But Toronto FC's six-match unbeaten run is over. They have been beaten at home by DC United by two goals to one. The season for us really starts now. You know, when, when now you look at the number of games that we have coming up, um, everybody's back. You know, have a good chance to get some consistency. Well, first of all, if you look at the standings, I mean, we're, we're still in a playoff position right now. We're still a couple games in hand, and so, you know, a couple wins, we'll, we'll jump to the top of the table. Polka dot, blue, red. Red for TFC, maybe? Let's try red. Being at home for us is a chance for us to rest, get our legs back. You know, we've had, you know, July is tough for us with a Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday, and so. It's very important that, you know, we're, we're home, um, we're not traveling all the time, you know, we're getting to sleep in our own beds. The first half of the season, uh, we dealt with a lot of injuries, people coming in and out of the lineup, you know, players proving themselves, so um, it goes to show the, the level of talent that we have across the entire team, so one guy can step in for the other, but at the same time, you know, people are setting themselves apart and we're getting some consistency and that consistency is kind of gives you a level of comfort and confidence to, to move forward and just know what you're going to get each and every game. During the World Cup break, I got to fly down to, to Florida. I had a, her family threw a baby shower for her and so we got all sorts of gifts, strollers, all sorts. We're loaded with baby stuff now, so we're ready. She's doing great. Um, she's been phenomenal. Health-wise, the baby's fine, the wife's fine, and her attitude has been phenomenal. She, you know, I told her the other day, like, you could easily be complaining all the time and still working 12-hour shifts, and I'm out here playing a game, so. <laughs> she's the hero of the family. A lot of kids are missing out on their proms at home, so we are allowed to do sort of the dance element of things. But because uh, they come in their nice suits, I think a lot of the girls last year even um, liked that part of it. Another thing is I'm hoping they'll dance again. They did last year, so I'm hoping they'll get on the floor and dance with some of the patients. I just got out of the hospital yesterday night. I got out in here. So I remembered I was going to prom and I was just wondering if I was going to see them again. So I thought, no, why not tweet about it? Maybe he'll answer and say if he is or not. 
girl, I believe her name was Maddie, uh, said she hoped to see me at the Sick Kids prom this year because I was here last year. So I responded and told her to save me a dance. So now she's saying she's hopefully going to get a dance with me. I can't wait, man. I actually, like, blushed when I read it because I, I blushed a lot, so it was really embarrassing. Like, oh my god, that's amazing. I need to get Andrew from the TFC to do me one small favor. We heard that it was someone's wish to dance with a TFC player. So Andrew, if you could grab Maddie and bring her right to the middle of the floor. Here we go, he's losing in the tie. Look at that. Yes. Come on in, Andrew. Oh, when I found this boy, turned his beating heart into my toy, and now he dances to my tune. kids are just really big Toronto FC fans so they're coming just to see the guys and to hang out with them and to be able to take pictures with them and then when they go home they tell all their friends and family about it and it's just a nice positive memory and we don't have too many of those here in the hospital. It's, it's great for all of us. Um, it's so cool for us to be able to come. I mean we're obviously all very lucky you know we play a sport for a living we have our health but it's, it's, it's great and it really puts things in perspective because these kids are out here and, you know they're going through some pretty tough times but, I mean they're all out there having a blast still right like their mentality is so great they're so happy it's just awesome to see and it like brings a smile to our face and it's like impossible not to have fun here. That's why I love these kids so much at Sick Kids Hospital you know because they're making the most of their lives and, you know maybe you know they didn't get dealt the best card but they're running with it. I, mean, I guess it just makes me feel like closer to the community. I mean, I, I really do consider this place home. I love it here. Like, everything about the city and being able to come out and do events like this like just makes you feel that much more connected to the city and to the people here and to the community. As well. That's probably my favorite picture of this whole year, you know, like uh, just because you know it, it, it embellishes the the thing of game being ready at all times and all that, you know. And that was my first game, so it, it, it means a lot to me. Christmas and my family is huge, you know. Um, it, it, it's it's a it's a holiday where we just we get to celebrate a whole year, you know. We get to celebrate. Um, Family time. You know the saying, you, 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 you can't win them all. Um, lost one nothing. Yeah. But I'm proud of my team's performance. 57% uh, percentage, 57% uh, uh, of possession. We have 11 shots to their six. Um, you know, we dominated them in every aspect of the game except goals. Man, there's a lot of great Christmases actually. Um, to be honest, I think this is this Christmas is going to be my best Christmas, believe it or not. This Christmas on surprise my family. Um, it's the first Christmas where my family's on my parents. My parents has done so much for me, you know, in um, in the past for, for me to get where I am right now. And I haven't been able to repay them the way I wanted to. I wanted to get them something, you know, where they'll remember for the rest of their life. So um, this Christmas, I, I got them a trip to Mexico, vacation for one week, so I, I can't wait for that reaction and, and, and it is going to be great. It's going to make me and the rest of my family just so happy because they deserve it. The one quality that they taught me, and it was hard to learn, um, was patience. And my parents, especially last year, was the, I think the year where was, it was most hard for me. And my parents were there for me every time telling me, you know, be patient, be patient. All this hard work is not going to go to waste if you don't give up. It's been an up and down swing for me this year. Um, 
individually, the team has been really good. Um, you know, we've had our few bad results, but for the most part, we're in it. We're in the playoff picture for sure. Paid particular attention, Paul, to see how Toronto FC in the first few moments set up here against Houston as a lot of attention was brought to how Toronto did set up in the early stages in their last home game. And I'm very happy for that. Um, and like that's first and foremost, that's my goal. My goal is the same as the team goal. But just like everybody, I have individual goals and unfortunately like it's been hard to meet them this year for many different circumstances. Englishman makes his way to a dangerous spot. Lays it off, here's Davis! Opens the scoring in the 13th minute. We're back looking for more. Look out, it's Davis again! Is this guy good or what? You could kind of feel the stadium kind of going, ah. Oh. They go, oh, TFC again, you know, we, we're going to lose this game. And on the field, I think that feeling maybe last year would have been the same for the players. Whereas this year, like, it happened and maybe I thought about that for like half a second. I said, no, wait a minute, it's still early and I'm looking around and seeing the players that are around me. It's like, this game is not even close to being done. The foe onside as this ball is played forward. You sense that something's going to happen. Side of the box, trying to find a way through. JD gets the ball at the wing, and I know, you know, he's going to, the ball's going to come in. I know that for sure. He's got three people to send it through. Here's a chance. Jonathan Osorio in the 39th minute. That's his first of the year to get Toronto back into the game. Like Lebo. The goalie fumbles the ball and it lands right on my head and it was an easy tap in and from there it just took that one goal and from there it was just it was all uphill for for, for the whole team. Maybe they tie it before the half ends. Straight ahead, three marks up the pitch. The play is wide. Dominic Oduro. Does he have it? Hall of save. Rebound! Back in the net. The game is tied. Osorio coming forward. Now here's Defoe coming in. Takes the shot. From 2 nothing down, Toronto FC have scored three unanswered. TFC, here's a turnover. It's Defoe one-on-one -on -one with the keeper, Tally Hall. Everybody on their feet. Defoe gets it through, stopped and finishes for TFC. season. Everybody is just supporting their hometown team. That's because every team is doing good and, and finally in Toronto FC we have that and I want to I want to go all the way and just like everybody else on this team and, and the staff and in the city and it, it's crazy because I believe it can happen and it's a very big possibility.